What is going on guys, your boy Marshall Moody, that quality content, and today is going to be a little bit more special. We play our final match in the CCL Stage 1, not going to spoil anything, and yeah, we did it on LAN against the second, well, other best team, because we were tied record-wise, map count-wise, everything, perfectly. So, they pulled up, and we played on LAN, cast it on the main stream, so I've been kind of mixing that all around, but quickly, let's look at the week before. Folks, it's that time of the week again where we get to watch some more College Cod. And with the end of Stage 1 coming up, things might be a little bit confusing. That's where I come in. You want to see more? This is the After Action Report. Let's pan our attention over to the B stream, where in the southeast, the Barry Bucks faced off against the UCF Knights. Well, the Knights played the Bucks close in the Bocage Search and Destroy, it wasn't nearly enough to kick their feet out from under them. So the Bucks pushed on to take the series 3-0. And the progression that we got, Austin one hit. Barry was able to find a tick to B. Working on a second, and now Indivin opening up the A site. And now, let's get right into it. <sighs> Nice empty room. We have some treats for the guests. Starburst Red Bull. I might want to, I might take one. What? I might take their food. I'm using this to record. I'm using the webcam to capture the whole room's audio for the future. I might have something smart to do. We're about to scrim. And at 7.30, we have our match. Here's the roster, Rob is somewhere else. And them boys. Hopefully, it's a very fun series. Love that. Uh, second, in regards to cameras, we've tested things with production before, like interviews and such, and those have gone south. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case tonight. So just some things to keep in mind. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, remember you're on camera. So, uh permutations to get through on this final uh, week for stage number one. That's the big thing. Stage one comes to a conclusion after this week. We will reformulate the regions to put them into different skill divisions, if you want to call them that. Top cut, mid cut, bottom cut. Top teams from each of the current groups will be restructured into the elite top side of what the CCL will look like. Our key matchup here in Florida. Both teams sitting flawless. This one does not really mean too much outside of who finishes first, who finishes second. Yeah, uh, I mean, you got two teams uh, to kick things off, uh, especially for the broadcast, Barry Buccaneers versus F uh, Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, you know, sitting pretty at the top of the leaderboards, and they're actually sitting right apart from the one each other <laughs> at yeah. land. So uh, it's going to be a great time to be able to see how these two teams actually stack up against each other. They undefeated as far as series are concerned. They're also undefeated as far as maps are concerned, Alan. Something's yeah. got to give, and we're doing it on land. And I think for, you know, a lot of people that are out there, you know, obviously the conversation around Florida Gulf Coast has been... They've been very vocal about why are we not in the top 25? Why are we so low on the top 25? Hey, time to show up. Time to prove your point. Because <laughs> largely speaking for this region, these have been the two marquee teams from pretty much in week number one. It just kind of goes to figure that we get them on the final overall match to determine who comes out as the number one seed in this region. Or pardon me, I should say in this division of the southeastern region. But as you had mentioned, flawless top to bottom all the way throughout. And well, <laughs> Not much to say here outside of the fact that we expect something good. I mean, obviously, those zeros are not going to hold for one team or the other. <laughs> FGCU, the number 19 team as far as power rankings are concerned. I mean, you said it, uh, Finest Allen. They, this team has to prove themselves. You know, they want to continue to beckon of why they should be higher up on everybody's placings. Kerchi, uh, Tippin, Beaser, and Justin. You got to be able to make an argument for it. Kerchi and Justin are those two guys you really want to be watching out for. Especially when it comes down to hard point and control, Plank is never really going to be in a safe spot <laughs> if they can find an avenue. We'll take a look over at the Barry Buccaneers. As this team, you know, I think a lot of people had a lot of conversation about them in, in the preseason. Like, wait a second, this Barry team is pretty good. And wouldn't you know it, they're better than pretty good. You got Giro, Grime, Mark Sees, and Indivent. And, well, I'll, I'll say this much. I've yet to watch them play. So I'm, I'm pumped to see how these guys, uh, you know, fare versus FGCU. The one time that I did end up watching a game being played out for Barry Bucks, again, take it for what it's worth. A, you can honestly put it in speculation of the competition comparatively to where these two teams stand. But Grime was nasty in the hard points, not to say that any single one of them weren't, but what mostly uh, tipped it off for me was Mark Sees and Agiro in the search and destroy. Their decision-making is top-notch. Being, being able to recognize the timings that are 
uh, presented for them on each and every single turn for the two maps that I did see, Alan, it was quite uh, quite a spectacle to behold. You're definitely going to enjoy watching these two players. Give me some tzatziki sauce on there. Whew, girl, Shoo! tell you what. Hey. Well, here's the maps. How about it? We got Bokash, map number one. I, I think you were kind of purposefully teasing the fact that, hey, we could just tie this map for the rest of, in, you know, in, in, you know, life. All the time. Tuscan search and destroy is with map number two. I'm going to be mostly looking out for it, and then the coin flip of a Gabba 2 control is going to be interesting. But as I was already saying, we are doing it live, baby. Players sitting across the table from one another. They are sitting there, I believe, in uh, one of the Thunderbirds' lounge. Uh, they are playing uh, on land. Is it, this is going to be the... They're in Barry's. Best? Yeah, Barry's. Oh, yeah. they're in ba oh, Barry Cod. Okay. Well, you know, hey, at Barry University, got to give them a big shout out to those guys for housing this opportunity for these eight players to be able to showcase their talents and abilities. Be able to really decipher who is honestly going to be the number one team coming out of this D division. I'm pumped, man. I, first of all, we get to see not just them with player cams. But how about those jerseys? I'm... Look, they're sick. you're on Bakaj Hardpoint, let alone the outcome itself. May determine what happens here at this series. But you can kind of see it. I mean, Marx is just taking a page out of Clayster's book here. Kind of taking the deep breathing. And everyone seems calm for now. I'm actually kind of surprised that I see people kind of like, you know, bouncing a little bit, you know, shaking the hands, rolling the shoulders up and down. Ah, this will be interesting. Well, I'm sure this is the calmest it will be throughout the entirety of this evening. Calm as possible and be able to absolutely erupt from that tempo that you were talking about, Alan. I think that's what's going to be most massive uh, going forward as we get the look from a, the middle of the table. Like They are on land, to say the least. This is going to be quite the testament to be able to see where these players end up standing for many future Call of Duties to come. I mean, they're all still so young. Who's to say that other locals, when they start coming around, oh, it's sure. going to be a great experience for them for many different years witnessed if not participated in some of those events but this is the one that matters right here right now barry in the white florida gulf coast in the blue and teal they'll make their way forward as we open up bakaj grime up top playing off the high ground as individual finds first blood you will see this map just go you know infinitely right i mean ties all the way through zero zero tie it was just a joke guys <laughs> all right let's go ahead and get some time Thank you, FGC, from getting inside of the hard point. Keep in mind, you, this is Ball uh, Bear University. The Bucks were actually starting off on the favorite side of the map, Alan, so they will end up holding onto those close 10 spawns. Those actually don't matter for maybe another, like, 10 seconds or so, but even still, you have a little bit of a double-edged sword if you are the Bucks. You don't want FGC to get too comfortable on P1. You don't want to break, uh, mm. get broken from the P2 front too early. A little bit of respect. It's kind of, you know, two boxers stepping into the ring, just throwing little left jabs at one another. Nothing really with a lot of weight behind it. So 9-3, the opening score. Second hard point about to come through. Marxy is having a little bit of trouble as Justin turns around. Good help coming through for FGCU. But the problem about it is Barry Bucks, once again, very quick to pick up exactly where the openings would be. And that will allow them a chance to get onto the second hard point for some least early time for now. Setup's going to be really tough to break. Eh? You can already see the way that the Buccaneers are setting themselves up here, Alan. Eh? There's no real opportunity for FGC to be able to hit the flank. Nobody's really attempting to come all the way down the river uh, walk in. Euro's actually just finding a lot of value from seeing a lot of players come through the middle of the map, but FGC will find themselves a favorable feed to be able to break inside the hard point. There's still 30 seconds to play for over yep. here, so you know the Bucks are going to try one more time. And they have to know that it's just going to be hitting from the south side of the map. FGCU nicely picks up a couple, but it's Marxy and Crime able to take down a follow-up three. But with that, interestingly enough, the players that came off respawn for BU actually just went and rotated. Nobody actually took tipping off the hard point. So as much as the kills for the Buccaneers were solid, it doesn't amount to anything. And for the Thunderbirds, that's going to be good scrap time locked in as they rotate over to three, up about 35 points. Yeah, they're really investing in making sure that P3 becomes a money hole for them. I mean, they are holding on to the head spawns. They are finding rotational kills as soon as FGC are trying to cut back through the middle of the map. They are dealt with, but you got to be careful with Beaker up over by that. Thank God, Hetty does have a clear-cut angle all the way through the A-bomb to be able to help out their teammates to work their way back into three. Yeah, they are trying to lock things. I'm, I'm same push up, same push up. Yeah. 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 The very Bucks. Lots of kills continue to come through. Hippin finally gets his first of the game. But outside of him, everyone else has been essentially evenly slaying. So one more hit to try to break on it. Hurts with the double, but that will be about it. As the reinforcements for Barry will allow them a chance to keep reinforcing from window side. And as they do, 15 seconds to play for as both teams not only worried about the scrap, but also try to focus on can we get across the front side of Grandma's over to Barn. Gonna have a big moment here for Justin. 
And that's why over by gate, well, as soon as I start highlighting them, they get cut down over by the gate. So now an opportunity for Invent on the flank side, trying to influence and maybe try to flip things out. But FGC, they put a lot of investment to make sure that they were set up properly. And they're actually leaving Trippin inside this barn more or less by themselves. It's going to come down to Justin to try to pick up that slack. While the rest of the Bucks are trying to work their way through Zig to get inside of this fourth hill. Yeah, just kind of going over just the heat map of what has been happening in the kill feed, there have been more convincing Barry Buck kill feeds than there have been Florida Gulf Coast ones. But the thing about it is, okay. you know, the play around the hard point has been considerable. Uh, you've got two players on the side of Florida Gulf Coast that are at or above 30 seconds worth of time. And, you know, for a game that is 66 to 57, it might be too early to tally it, but it just goes to show that for the Thunderbirds, they are doing a nice job of focusing on the objective itself. Thing is, if this trend continues, though, we're... Barry continue to get these clean kill feeds and turning it into good positional advantages, the lead could get out of hand pretty quickly. So we need to see some recovery here from FGCU. I think what you're mostly just recognizing is going back to that tempo talk, right? I mean, if the, if the Bucks are just able to recognize, hey, we are absolutely clearing out these kill feeds more often than not, it just comes down for them to be able to deny more of the map, to be able to continue to keep things mixy, which is why I really appreciate being able to see Marxies hitting up on top barn, be able to deal with some players, at least for the exit. That's going to keep middle of the map contested for the Buccaneers a little bit more while FGC are trying to scramble their way back through the map to be able to break through the front. And really, you know, the whole thing about this, you talk about those trends, kind of the tempo, the pacing. Tippin just needs to figure it out. 3 and 13 is just not going to cut it in a match that is this close so far. Yeah. So that's where I'm really looking at first and foremost. He's got to start getting involved with more than just sitting on the hard point itself. As much as that is appreciated, you can't continue to get out slayed like this and figure that you're going to win. But 15 seconds of scrap time here through our first rotation. And not a lot of score here for either side, considering that we're under three minutes on the game clock. So we'll see how this goes. Tippin inside the hill for the last seven seconds and... It'll be on Florida Gulf Coast to exit and try to find some success through mid-map if they want to try to flip over these spawns. But again, it's a four-man feed for Barry. Map gets fully reset going in towards another second set of hills. The only difference is now FGC again spawning all the way over by those hedge spawns. and don't allow the Bucks to be able to set themselves up. Marxies is in a prime position up top. Grandma's to be able to cut down players even thinking about getting inside the barn. And you can see Tippin's thinking about trying to chase for the trade, but... They're just completely unaware. While this play is also unfolding, FGC spawn over by the west side of the river. And while they're trying to find isolated gunfights, Gero's going to take uh. down two. Marxies is still finessing over by P1. Yeah, hold, hold, hold. Yeah, 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 hold, hold. Stretching and getting a little bit worse for wear the longer that this map goes on. Currently, 24 point gap. Second hard point going to open in the next 10 seconds. FGCU happy to take the conceded scrap time before they start to set up their approach to break. End of it. Nice position for him to make sure the barn stays safe from the front. He's also got help behind him to make sure there are no flanks to come around the back. And, well, every lane is covered, which is good news. But the one thing that's missing here proper is nobody from Barry has stepped onto the hard point yet. Yeah. Who would have thought that uh, to be able to win a hard point map, you got to at least keep a player inside of the hard point to accrue some time. I know it's crazy, John Madden's statement early here in map number one from your boy, Alan. But even still, this is going to give an opportunity for FGC to be able to hit from the front. And they actually did find value with this uh, in the previous go of things. Justin trying to at least find one more before they get cut down. Mark sees also uh, during the entirety of that last kill an Endeavor actually went on an eight spree. So full streaks in the back pocket for the Bucks to be able to feel Pretty darn pretty for themselves if they end up not being able to break inside the three but even still the gunfights will continue to go their way you would assume they would be able to get some more hard points on but fgc are just contesting from the front and the buccaneers are going to allow a lead swap to come through yeah it's another situation where it's just how is fgcu up right now every time we see a convincing kill feed it's like barrier like great good job Oh, wait, we got to play for the objective. Like, they're just not getting into the hill. In, in the moments that they decide to actually go play for hardpoint time, they actually don't have those successful zones that we've seen. So, once again, another lead swap potentially imminent as Tippin is once again going to fall. Not an uncommon occurrence with him at just 7 and 21. And with this, Barry still trying to lock things down, but it's Beaster who's able to get a three piece of the mix. Tippin a good first kill on this read trap over towards a platform. And FGCU have successfully not just broken, they've also flipped the spawns. I mean, look, from top to bottom, Alan, you, you would think that this would be a much more convincing lead for the Barry Bucks, but 
Yeah. You can constantly just lean on what Beaster's been able to do. Justin now is a dead even 23 and 23. Beaster's actually on a four streak. Essential to get themselves some streaks as they're over by the contest door, just waiting for players to challenge on in. It, it really feels like that the Bucks are, are just. Everybody's trying to find a different avenue. Everybody's trying to find a route. Everybody's trying to find themselves those isolated gunfights, go one for two in most instances of time. Now we're finally getting a, a, at least a semblance of a setup to be able to get themselves inside P4, barring Justin has anything to say about it. Let's find one up top. I mean, FGCU right now is getting outslayed by like 11, something close to that, as it continually will change, but they're up by 11. It's it's definitely baffling to say the least. Another convincing kill feed comes through for Barry. This has to be the moment that you start locking down some significant time here at four. And for the moment, they're doing a pretty solid job of it. FGCU working on their way really from multiple points of ingress here. And they will actually flip the spawns with that kill from Beaser. Will Barry recognize this? The kills are coming through. Pinstripe and the kill feed. 20 seconds to fight for. Barry trying to get their guns up towards the back. But once again, it's FGCU who make the heads up play. They get around the back. They flip. And that means scrap time for them. I think what we're also able to recognize, especially when it comes down to hard point, is that FGC, albeit maybe not over slaying when it comes to their opposition of the Bucks, is that they are actually playing really smart hard point. And although they're giving up a solid like 20 seconds or so, one player hitting from the front of a lot of these different hills down, you do have at least two, if not three players on the opposite side trying to get those uh, very favored spawns. And it's actually happening right now. Again, you got Kirchy on the back side of the water wheel. You also had Tiffin, who unfortunately didn't go down, but they did find Marskis in the back. One game, one game, man. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I want to see him. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to tough house. I'm going to tough house. Back to the Great plus the fall of elimination to at least tally up some of the scrap time, and that's actually very important. That swing of 15 seconds is the difference between being down 220 to 160 and being within about 30 points. So now it's just down for FGCU. Can you lock down this P2 side of the map and hopefully find some time here on the first hard point? You have to live through the streaks of Marskis, who's only able to find one with the glide bomb still holding on towards the strafing. And as kills continue to come through, Grimes going to sit there and say, all right, I've got teammates in front of me. Let me go help as we look to flip the spawns again. Uh, Beaster has to go big in the back. Actually has really good help from Courage to be able to find that last kill. Tippin will end up finding the final blow. And now you've completely reset the map, but in your favor for FGC in the third set. Better late than never, I always like to say, but still only a 20-point deficit. They have some pristine positions. Would have been a big gunfight to take down Giro over by the water wheel, but break from the front will end up ensuing. FGC more than anything. Yeah, you want to be able to hit for the scrap time. You cannot afford to lose these P2 spawns. Yeah, you have to hold on to this side of the map. Independent. Looking for an angle outside and around the barn. Good for the double. Third would be tipping around the corner, but decides instead to play for the high ground. Second hard point about to open up. 226, 195 the score. Minute 12 on the clock. FGCU. Able to get into the hard point first, and they've got a read on the Euro. Nice kill from Beaser. He's been so clutch picking up the holes that had been starting to accrue on the backside of a lot of these sites. He's not even done yet. Beaser for the third. He's got a fourth throw in the corner. He's going to take the ego challenge. Marskis was there for some team help. Justin along the backside, though, will keep this in contest. 226, 212, and it's FGCU still into the hard point as they go three for two. Yeah, Justin picking up that automaton, able to take down one player here, resurfacing themselves out of Tim, and now Tippin actually ends up spawning in, and they'll get the squad spawn for Justin, so they're still holding on to the backside of this hill. They're going to be able to get a lead swap off of it. Yeah, but you cannot win here anymore from either team's perspective. The big key is how much does Barry want to contest versus trying to hold on to the individual time that could come through for P3. Justin continues to go back and forth. They'll turn and burn onto Indivin. That will take out the last player from the scrap time. 229 and 228. And look at the route. Tippin, I don't care how many kills you have. This is the heads up play. Making his way around the backside of tower. And he's got to look at this hard point. They know exactly where these Barry Bucks players are. Justin gets the double. Grime inside the hard point trying to match that. And he gets the turn on to Justin. Last player to deal with this Beezer. Finds one elimination. The stun helps him get the second. But can't get the pistol up in time. And Barry still in the hill. Going to be able to at least coordinate one more pinch. You got one player hitting over by the water wheel. That's going to be Kurtz. They got to go big to coordinate this pinch and be able to break inside this hill. Kurtz is able to find one. This is the 3v3 for the hard point, but Grime repinches. Grime for two into the third. And the Barry Bucks, they will strike first. 
Well, I'm gonna say, 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 i Nobody's standing up, nobody yelling, just smiles across the board for the bucket surprised. to decide. I'm yo, so surprised. I'm, I was sitting back, I was ready for somebody to stand up out of their chair, especially from Grime, who absolutely just had their way there at the end. 32 and 30 was the final scoreline. Indivent was uh, that guy throughout the majority of the middle of the map, Alan. But even still, it, you know, when Grime is that guy who is not being traded in the back, even when the pinch is coming through, not only from Tippin, but Kirch over by the water wheel side, you gotta deal with that player that is pushed up first and foremost. Yeah, you want to get inside the hill. I understand that that's where you're gonna want to look first and foremost, but where are the reinforcements coming from? Obviously, if you just spawn over by P2, they're gonna be in the backside of the hedges. You gotta be able to cut down the reinforcements, keep those numbers dwindled inside the hard point, and just have that somewhat of a blind trust that even if those players that were coming in from the front side of grandmas didn't have to find all the kills in the world, even if they found damage, you cutting down the reinforcements and then resurfacing yourself from the A-bomb door and also from the main street window, we're going to be able to clean up those kills regardless. Just a little bit of a misstep there at the end, but a lot of missteps overall when it came down to the Buccaneers in the heart of that hard point. But that stops an offensive push from coming all the way through. That stops a defensive retake from even happening. Well, here we go. Again, I'm just surprised that nobody jumped up out of their chair with the tight map one like that. Yo, come on. What, what are we like, doing over here? It, this isn't COD until someone's screaming at the other player. Telling you. But clearly, respect given on both sides. You have to appreciate that, too. Good sportsmanship. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, I, I, I can't hear you yell, but I, I want to see it at least. All right. We'll see. Beaser, just open hand. Indivent. Looks like he's actually bringing the same to battle. And that's just a good delayed peek for Beaser. First blood comes through. Kirch, more than enough time here to get a plant. He's actually hugging really close to mid. This will guarantee a post plant position up top through fire. And Grime, who initially was trying to contest from that P5 spot that you had mentioned, is actually going to try to flood down low on mid. And for Barry, they've been eluding every single member so far. And this is going to be a tough post plant to make with 30, 30 seconds to play with. If you could find this kill, it would have been big. Euro actually throws a lot of shots over towards Justin. And Kirchie's actually going to be able to take down Grime all the way over back to P3. Now you do have player of Marskis that's in top fire, but you got to be able to deal with these kills first and foremost. Beaster does it with a sniper, does it with a pistol, knows that the last player is in back yep. fire. Good luck, have fun. Yeah, really solid. And it all starts with just the opening first blood. Like the defense for Barry, obviously very much so positioned through mid or over towards B, trusting that Indivent can at least be able to provide some sort of information off of the scope. Fortunately, not able to. The retake of fire was solid, just came way too late. So good opening for FGCU. And, you know, bad on the back for Beaster for being able to pretty much confirm the round of the first pick. Yeah, and I mean, you said it right there. I mean, that first blood that comes through on the opposite side of the ruins... But most importantly, I think you also have to look at Justin just denying any push that could have potentially came all the way through in the bottom side of the church awning. You did have Giro that did throw a couple shots from the uh, the church there. As all this was happening off screen, keep in mind you. But knowing that that player was there, you had to respect the space. Could not retake from that angle. Bought a lot of time for the plant to come through. This time, in event, going to get the better of B series. Tries to go for a jump chow. Now a numbers advantage for Bucks in this round. Anything you can do, I can also do. Wow, the song goes, you know that. <laughs> Same spot, same shot, same plan, but this time Euro tosses a right knee out of inner U, and that's going to be enough for Tippin to get the immediate response. And then actually, what a read that is onto Grime, topside zig, right over the box heady. But who's going to be the catalyst to start moving forward? And it may be Kirch. He's been able to clear out at least one player through fire. Justin zoning off the player and zig. Wants to go even further behind that. Oh, it's a little sloppy, but there's help. Help is on the way. Time is the problem, though. And now we got eight seconds to play with. Indivit just has to make sure he checks. No one's on. No one is on. Well, he's on, but I don't think he got there in time. Close. It's gonna be real close. Oh, <laughs> mustachio's hair away. Being able to get that, you gotta trust your teammate to be able to at least push to hold the angle. You didn't have the information that they were over by that contest spot. Backside of you, but yeah, tough. Uh... Tough to say the least, especially when you completely just cleared out the entirety of the play game. And that got scary for the Bucks. keep in mind you. I mean, nobody was worried about the rooftop push that Kirchie was able to find for themselves. 
That was going to be the end-all, be-all that if maybe if it had just happened, what, like all of like two seconds sooner, I would have been able to at least get that defuse. But one for one we go, offense for offense. Team who finds that first blood has guaranteed themselves the round, the 100% so far. This first two, you like that. E push coming through from FGC. They're all over here as well, and as far as the Bucks are concerned, they're not set up for this at all. Not even a little bit. And the thing is, you've got a double stack in radio to stop the rotation from top church. Kirch has pushed through to make sure nobody rewraps back. The only place they could possibly be coming from is from P5 right now. The bomb yet to be planted. It's starting to go down, but Indivin could blow this up single-handedly, and he gets two, able to take it for the third! Three for Indivit! Stops the plant, and it's just on to Justin. Nobody watching the flank. Indivin is searching for it. The entire ace would be massive. Justin now has to resurface this coming back from the patio side. If you're Indivin, I mean, you know the bomb is down. You literally oh, just awkward. witnessed it. It's going to crack through the door. Yeah, the ghost is on the opposite side. Indivin is just going to hold this angle away for the top. The easy reads. Oh, the oh my goodness. How big is that for back-to-back -back rounds from Indivit? <laughs> he pulls the ace, but most importantly, it's just the fact that he wins the 1v2 from the top side and then immediately turns it into the third. And then, well, just unfortunate door antics. I want to say that Indivit 100% heard that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, you, that door was so loud, you hear that all the way on the Berlin Search and Destroy. That's not even, uh, that's map number five, Alan. They, that's how loud that door crack is. But uh, I think what's even more impressive, again, you know, FGC, they make that push come through from patio. Nobody was worried, maybe sitting inside a radio to manifest mate or to stop the flank play that ended up coming through. Another sniper 1v1 on the opposite side, and Vince holding the angle. I don't think that Beaster is over aggressing the child this Whoa. time around. But that's a big first blood. Nice shots from Grime over top of the Zig box. I think that's Grime with an MP40, by the way. <laughs> just shot. Yeah, I think it was. Hard to say. No, nope, it's an odd time. Just kidding. Whew. Retracting nade, though, from Beaster. Does at least find one. Grime. No one's touching him on that position. Last one left is Beaster. Would have to go for the ace. Not going to happen. The Barry Bucks. Looking solid. Just good first bloods once again coming out of Barry. Just decisive again, you know, the, the overall read that comes through from Grime uh, over top of that Zig box finds that immediate first kill up top church. And I mean, you're able to recognize uh, one of two different things, right? If you deal with that first player, there's nobody else uh, on top sandbags. Where else do you have to look? You know the hit off the information that Indivin was able to find whether or not those players for the Buccaneers were counting stuns of how many came flying over the ruin side. You knew exactly where the rest of the hit was coming from in the middle of the map. It was a wonderful setup, great offensive hit. Now you need an answer if you are FGC, but Giro will open up for first. Beaster playing top monument will answer oh. two of their own. Brilliant response from Beaster. Keeps the whole play safe. Bomb just behind him. But for now, Thunderbird's more interested in looking to see where these rotations are going to come from. And, well, it comes from the least expected place. Indivin is having himself an unbelievable search and destroy. Seven and three. Bomb collected but hesitant to make a move forward, you have to feel like this is eventually going to be a setup for at least an A plant, if not a post plant, towards outer in particular. I mean, you have a lot of time, right? I mean, the, the opportunity to maybe try to work your way back over to B is absolutely there, and the, and the Bucks are able to recognize that, which is why they're playing super split from one another. Marski's able to get the read, backs away, keeps his life. There is no way that he rotate, by the way. End of end is watching this 100% of the way. So they have to play for A. Uh, Tippin should have seen that player topside right. Well, now he'll for sure know. Oh, but he puts oh. the gun down at the exact wrong moment. It's Tippin for a 1v2. Not a lot of time. Gets a good read on the first. Knows that the second should be over to the right. But instead decides to stick for the plant. This is a heck of a read, heck of a call. And he's going to get this down successfully. Into it. <gasps> now trying to track behind him. Wants to play for the kill. Tippin on the outside for the 1v2! Oh, massive time for Tippin to show up to get Florida Gulf Coast back to even. They have gotten somewhere near about triple negative in that hard point, Alan, but they just went big in that round. That was a must-needed round, and Tippin, I mean, whether it was a teammate or somebody else screaming that you saw somebody top church like that, that was the read and the necessity that FGC absolutely needed. And the second that Bucks ended up throwing one player over by grass to be able to see at least one, if not two players over by the Monument side. Yeah, that rotation was not going to be coming through. Not cleanly anyway. They had to play towards A, but Tippin able to find those last two kills will keep them in a one-round deficit. The quick plan over by A. Nobody was surprised. As far as the defense is concerned, 
SEC were almost uh, trying to read that it was going to be a B push, but now a flank play might be able to come all the way through from Justin and Kirch. Well, you've got to go quickly. Hero's watching this. There's an easy oh. first. And don't even bother with the second. Just back away. 30 seconds on the clock. Kirch <laughs> sniffing around. Nothing there. And there's just no success anywhere on the map here for FGCU. Tippin is also brought down to 4 HP. This round is over. Tippin. A little froggy wants to go for another 1v1 chow. Also recognizing you could be hit from behind, and well, he read it correctly, just did not trust the read. Would not have made much of a difference in the end. And Barry will replant themselves at a two round advantage. Pushing themselves closer and closer from being go up 2 0 in the series. And again, just a nice, decisive play coming through. Again, you work that quick plane over at A. The island player is the one that has to go big more than anything, and that's Giro. You know, you, you ended up at least recognizing maybe it was information that you were able to find on the opposite side maybe it wasn't but just knowing that through previous offensive rounds there's always at least one player for fgc that hits through the rooftops maybe inside a top fire you're able to completely negate that at least finding the first and reading the second was even bigger but church not fully keeping their gunny up not expecting a player to hit through the bottom side of church needs to get traded out and justin will get that answer Ah, this 1v1 on the outside though continues to be a problem for fgcu really outside of the opening round even now 10 and 4 getting it done with really any weapon you could throw him an owen and he'd be fine with it it feels like right now nice response from hero gets a read on the last fgcu member on the back in the same moment you kind of saw that angle that was being crossed and barry holy looking solid in the search it just comes through with all these first bloods they continue to amount you know they see at least one player that cut down the middle of the map and that opens up so many different avenues of opportunity uh, for the Bucks to be able to collapse on, but they just simply don't need to. Uh, they are just collecting off of unforced errors of FGC, trying to get aggressive to be able to take these angles. You talked about the 1v1 in between Beaster over by the Monument Lane there with Indivent. I'm going to end up getting it this time around. It's going to be a 3-1 split coming out for the Bucks up on map point to go up 2-0 in the series. Gary making their own mark over towards the B site. Justin, you have to finish this kill. Does collect it. These are also responsibly able to find one for one trades as he will read that this hit for Barry is going to be over towards B. But talk about confidence. The end of it just cuts right back up toward Church Ramp. He finds another inside, but Justin quick to pick up the pieces. Finds the trade leaving Euro for a 1v2. Isolates the first. Now a 1v1. Five in a row. No bomb to play with at the moment. And it's tipping on the other side. How much are you in this kid's head right now after his really poor hard point? He's got a clutch of his own, though. And with 35 seconds, Euro still has to make his way back over to collect this bomb. Yeah, and it's all the way on the backside of the church alley as well. I don't think that Tiffin is completely aware of this. Has to clear out a lot of different angles themselves. The amount of Italian rats that live here on Tuscan is real, my friend. But Euro will end up Whoa. collecting that bomb. It's actually rewrapping over towards B. Tiffin can find some time to be able to stop this if they end up challing out. But they're hesitating on it. Might be able to find it from up top. Will they take down Gear well from done. above? Yes, they will. That was wonderfully played by Tippin there at the end. Completely cleared out all of the A site. Went back through fire to clear out from that P5 area. The moment they got inside radio, Gear with the 50 50 call. Of course, made the wrong one there at the end. Yeah, it's just a solid play, I think, overall from Tippin. You know that they've got success through B. Put yourself up top. Re clear out P5. If a plant happens at A, all right, well. Now you're kind of going in with no information, but the likelier play would be that there would be eventually a plant for B, especially with the time on the clock. So heads up play from Tippin. Keeps FGCU in this map. Yeah, whatever. No, no, no. Anyone's out. Anyone's out. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But Marski's making life very difficult. First blood on Justin, and then immediately pushes forward to take position underneath fire. Grime also trying to threaten up top big 1v1 with Tippin, which he wins. And that puts Barry into a 4v2. Make it now a 4v1, just down to Beezer. Beezer for the ace. Stay alive in the search. Oh my god! Yo, I got no weapon bloom. Oh my god, that was perfect. Oh, the MP40's coming through from the Bucks. Just too strong. A little smile coming through from Tiffin. Just like, what the heck happened? They had so many different opportunities to close out a lot of those rounds. But I mean, as far as the Barry Bucks are concerned, these decisive play calls and the overall reads when it came down to especially for those defensive rounds and post-plant situations were just at an all-time high Indivent 11 and 5 for them 
A lot of that work actually coming through with the car 98k across that p1 side alan i mean beaster may have found that first the very first round but individuals yeah. quick off the bounce to say never again <laughs> fool me once shame on you fool me twice you will not fool me twice that's like that's the way the saying goes you got to get into the enemy's heads run free that they were not able to at least close this out in a 3-0 the best way you, you possibly do that but when it comes out of control to be able to get that round number five, it comes down to making sure that you, in fact, have a higher kill tally leading in towards that round number five. Just hold out strong. Make sure that at least you're playing those power positions. Never throw away too many lives defensively trying to get that A zone back in your favor. You're able to hold all the way out. And hey, who's to say that FGC can't get the ball rolling going in towards the Gob2 hard point? But got to get through the control first, of course. We'll see how things fall. Still smiles all around. Always good to see. Love that. A couple of conversations happening three get saucy battle for first battle for first other things as well five no. <laughs> definitely come to mind but other well, buzzwords yeah. <laughs> buck starting on defense first that seemingly will be the favorite side more often than not you can definitely dictate the pace continuing of what we ended up seeing from the Bucks, especially through that hard point, albeit very, very close. They can continue with their slaying prowess of what we ended up seeing. This should be a very easy lead for them to be able to lean on as far as lives remaining. That's interesting. You know, we've seen a handful of teams try to get this mid setup, get the AA gun, and then make your way back over, because then you've got a kind of a threat onto both control zones almost at the same time. The thing about it is, even if you go kill for kill, pinstripe for pinstripe, you know, Trade for trade, it does not really give you much room to work with when it comes to your offense, simply due to the fact that you've already lost so much time. So a desperate play comes through. Kirch making his way over towards B here after the initial attempt was denied. Does well to stall the clock. The rest of his teammates would love to get out of spawn, though. And as they finally deal with Gyro up top, they will start to make at least some foot forward. But the problem is Grime is also here watching, and he's on four in a row. Yeah, a lot of trust has come through. You know, if Kurt just stalling up the clock, what was that, about like 20 seconds or so? Definitely felt like an eternity yeah. for FGC to be able to work their way through the jungle walk. But you got to lock down those positions when you're coming back through the jungle walk, through the arch rock. Now Kurt's just breaking their own ankles, trying to figure out where the hell these players even went to yeah. while they were behind you. Poor lad. 12 seconds remaining, trying to make something happen with a 10 life deficit. Nothing you can do here besides sit and spawn and wait for these next eight seconds to fade. And this is not a yep. good round for FGCU. You got a total of seven kills. That is no bueno. And we're starting to, I think, see that what was supposed to be two very highly anticipated top 20 teams, there is a huge skill gap here between these two squads, it feels like. Yeah, I think that really does say something uh, about this Barry University. You know, the Buccaneers say, that, uh, you know, albeit both teams walking into this matchup undefeated, they quite literally ran through uh, everybody in this Southeast Division D. But it, there's even that separation, you know, number 19 for FGC, number 14 for Barry University. <laughs> really wagging my finger at you, whoever does the top 25 rankings. It's going to be very, very difficult to be able to really gauge where these teams actually stand up against one another until you end up seeing these matchups on your screen. Where I'm actually going into this match, or this round rather, excuse me, on a 6-3. will end up at least having that straight run, one more kill, yeah. get themselves the glide, and Hero does find oh, that boy. Play, so he can get on the clock early. This has all gone wrong. You've got Marxies, who's already through going to be able to deny any play up top for green good response from justin but it's going to come at the cost of at least two ticks of progress the thunderbirds want to go for this again though is the question my suggestion would be no and it looks no. like they will at least make that decision themselves don't need to heed my advice the problem here is you've only gotten two kills and look it's just like i i don't know what to say here i really don't I mean, the first hard point was a really solid affair with FGCVU playing really focusedly on the hard point itself and playing off the objective, but we're starting, it's it's starting to get to be more than just a bother that Tippin continues to find himself triple negative. Yeah, you know, again, you know, it, it, it comes across, the, like, we can just kind of butter it up to say slaying prowess, but I mean, more importantly, often than not, especially with the Bucks to be able to showcase for themselves, they are just more adept at being able to not only isolate kills but being able to win gunfights convincingly barely losing any numbers there's beaster be able to find at least one kill kirch is able to take down marskis but you still have players just push all the way up for the bucks to stop the clock over here being grind finds two yeah. not good news 22 pulling up against 14. you stall on the clock making some progress out here beat and it does lose a key gunfight in the back though so with that FGC, you do have some pressure to kind of split this berry team into two pieces 
but Grind has not has not been challenged. And Justin loses his gunfight topside A gun. It's all gone wrong. This is how it happens right here. This is how it happens. You're watching an offensive round on Gavudu happen in real time. Set the TiVo. No one has TiVos anymore. But set the direct TV. Not not sponsored, but well, it's happening. Yeah. I was say, I didn't even honestly have direct TV anymore. I don't even, I don't have cable television. Everything on my computer, but on Florida Gulf Coast might just be watching as a very long two hour, could be three hour drive home if you include the traffic. Let's be candid here. This is <laughs> This is not looking too good. A two quick <laughs> rounds coming out. At least the vibes are so strong. They're still smiling, Alan. But, I mean, Bayer University are having their way. Dude, they're getting rinsed. Like, yeah. <laughs> this. It was, it was a wash, map one and two. And now they're just getting rinsed. Rinsed yeah. out, man. This is, uh. Whew. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't even know what to say. I really don't. Like. This is the biggest skill gap we've seen in two top 25 teams playing up against each other all year so far. And the thing about it is, like, Bakaj is Bakaj. Like, if Barry just focused more on the objective, that game could have been a blowout. Or if Tippin were playing better, it could have been a blowout the other way. But at this point in time, I mean, if this result stands, I'm already going to frame that it probably is because defense for Barry here. At a certain point, at what when do you start looking at your academy team for FGCU and say, all right, Tippin, nice try. Like... I, I hate to say it, but like you can, if you're trying to play for a major playoff run, if you're FGCU, you can't have three and twelve happening on a control through three rounds. Yeah, yeah, I think it just comes down to the role uh, which Tippin honestly plays. Also gets gunned by Indivin with an MP40 at range. By the way, gun's pretty good. Um, I, I think that you have to, I think you also have to realize what, what the role also has in store for what Tippin does bring to the table because slaying strength, especially in a game. Like Vanguard, the way that it sets itself up for. I mean, that's the difference maker in between getting yourself five seconds on the opening hard point comparatively to holding down a solid 40. The difference in, in between actually finding yourself a favorite kill feed and especially being able to find trades in that search and destroy was the big difference maker from a lot of those rounds. 18 seconds remaining for FCCU to be able to make this push at least a strong one, and they're trying to make an argument for it. Trying to. Thing about it is Grime is still playing around the backside waiting for help and Beezer has not seen him on this close tank and as oh boy as he misses him Grime makes his play forward that's going to be good for a quad feed and yep back through the Everlanes you go FGCU have fun on the golf side of the state of Florida Miami's here to party Barry does it in 3-0 fashion unreal let's go baby we're going to keep that perfect record let's get it oh. <laughs> Indivin, even just leaning to the well, a little personality, you know, grind with a little, a little bit of a pop off. Love the 3 0 coming out from Indivin, but I mean, you gotta be frustrated if you are FGCU, right? Uh, I mean, not only did you make a two hour drive, three hours if you're including the traffic, but you also have to be looking at a, a simple factor of that. Look, you were tied for first place. This was your biggest run in as far as what we were concerned. We thought it was gonna be full sale armada. You know, maybe UCF, the Knights, would have been able to give themselves a certain amount of an argument in an earlier round, but this was going to be the end-all be-all for your last round game play. This was going to be your biggest argument for being that number one seed. It was the only argument to be said, and Barry just completely walk in and then wipe the absolute floor yeah. with all of the bodies of FGC. Look, it's just things that Straight cannot happen. happen. If you if you want if you want to be a playoff caliber team, you want to be able to make a deeper run. Can't go on Twitter and say that you deserve to be higher up in the top 25 rankings when you get absolutely rinsed like that by the number 14. Really go into the little core mechanics that makes a Call of Duty player, but like all the way down to their centering, for example. But their decision making was also really right there all along with the rest of their team. I think that it mostly just comes down to being able to really find yourself. Find yourself with it within this team, especially...